Hey, I'm John Darkarps in Vancouver, Canada, and this is my uh, application for the 100% live event at Movement 2024. Hope you like it. Uh, oh yeah, this is all improvised. Um, I'll tell you about the gear later.
Hey, this is uh, John Darkharps uh, from Vancouver, BC, following up my application to 100% Live with a quick run through of how I'm doing stuff here, uh, what gear is in play, and um, how I've de devised this system to fluidly play in an improvised fashion uh, and just make stuff up um, in the moment, which is um, obviously really freeing and um, a hell of a lot of fun. and it's kind of a bit edgy and dangerous and I love it. So hope uh, hope you get something out of this. Um, so at, at the center of the whole setup is um, the Pulsar 23, which is the master clock for the whole system. This clock divider here, and I will zoom in a bit. The clock divider here is sending um, a full clock to uh, a clock and reset to this torso T1, and that is passing its clock and reset out um, this thing here. Oops. It's going in, clock and reset is going in and then out again into IntelliGel Steppy. Uh, so these are the three sequencers in the whole situation, but this is the main one. Um, and then I have a bunch of semi permanently patched. Um, things, but a really core useful concept of what's happening here is I have a bunch of like floating cables that are waiting to be patched and they have little color codes on them to denote different things. So I have a system where I have two different kick sources, so red and orange, and then I have two different hi-hat sources, uh, yellow and green. And so in the order of the alphabet, red orange, yellow, green, goes kick, kick, hi-hat, hi hi-hat, for this um, little switching malt. So what I can do is I can run the clock, and I don't have anything patched here apart from, well, actually I have a sample, or sorry, a sequence going on on the Nord drum. I've just cleared that, so we've got nothing happening now. Um, I want to put a hi-hat on, so yellow, then green. So yellow, I want a slow hi-hat on the number, I'm going to put on the number two division, division, and I'm going to put uh, green on the number eight division, then I'm going to put red on the number two division, and I'm going to put orange on a special output called the Sheos module, uh, which is a kind of randomly generating um, trigger, which can be synchronized. So it's currently free running. This would control its rate. But when I find the blue, wherever it is, where is blue? Blue's around here somewhere hiding in plain sight. I'm holding it. <laughs> Classic. Here's blue. I'll put blue on eight as well. And so now I've made all these connections. Oh yeah, and then I have black and white. Uh, black represents an inversion circuit, so sort of the opposite thing that one of these pins might be doing or saying as far as a trigger is concerned. So I'm going to put that on the number two as well. Okay, and then this one here synchronizes the LFO, the white one. White synchronizes LFO. I'm going to put that on the number one divisor. Oops. And now with all of these patched, I can start connecting these ones at the bottom that are just waiting around to be patched. So I'll find my bass drum, and I'll put it on the trigger input. So now we've got something going on. And I've got my hi-hat. I'll connect that. And then I have other... Um, 
trigger connectors waiting to be patched. I have this one that is the output of this Sheos module, kind of hardwired. I always have it patched to this. So I can trigger the bass with that. So in this way I can start building up patterns and I can change things and I can start adding more modulations. Um, so this one is the inversion circuit, um, so for your classic off-hat. Okay, so that's a really basic way of getting grooves on the pulsar. But then uh, over here in Euro rack land, so we're, we're synchronized. Um, so it doesn't matter what I do here. If I make it really slow, everything's just gonna keep up. Um, so over on uh, Steppyville, I can load my preset. And this is just a super basic set of sequences which are triggering the Morphogene sample playback device, which goes into a filter, which goes into a delay, and also goes into this um, thing called the panharmonium, which, um, for want of a better word, just sings back the sound you send into it. It's a wonderful device. Uh, and then this crossfader mixes between wet and dry. I'll show that in a minute. So I have a, a bunch of uh, preloaded samples from tracks that I've produced on my um, Morphogene. So I can just, I'm gonna randomly load a, a reel and see what we get. Okay, so I seem to have gotten a stab. start tuning oscillators to if I hear a pitch coming out of this thing that I think I want to kind of like hold the tune that's coming out of this then I might tune the kick drum or the bass voices uh, appropriately but then I can start adding effects and I can start building build-ups so sending into the and harmonium, just adding a lot of feedback. And at a certain point, it's gonna bite. <laughs> One, I can use this to sequence um, this Nord drum, and I can also sequence two of the voices on the um, Balsar 23, the bass and the snare, but I typically use it to sequence the Nord drum. So, select a track. Thank you. 